everyone. Welcome to the last session of our training series. My name is Cindy Schmidt, and um, I will be joined by my colleague Amber McCollum today to talk to you about um, a really great web, web tool um, that's used globally for looking at forced conditions. So just as a reminder, all the course materials can be found um, on the UTTC website here. So if you are interested in downloading anything from any of our past sessions, you can find everything there, including the links to the homeworks. Um, at the end of this session, um, which will be a, a short session today, actually, um, we'll have time for any discussion or last minute questions that you have. Um, but if you have additional questions when we're not online, so at, at the after the end of the course, um, please feel free to email us um, at our email addresses listed here. And again, just as a review, um, these are the topics that we covered over the last four weeks. Um, this week, um, we're going, it's the second session of the remote sensing web tools. So today, just two things um, you're gonna learn about Global Forest Watch. Um, we'll have a quick lecture, I'll do a quick lecture and then Amber's gonna follow with a demonstration. And um, as we've mentioned before, we would really, really, really appreciate if you could complete our end of course survey um, and we'll provide you a link in the chat box. Um, it really helps us to improve, um, improve our trainings that we do, whether they're in person or in a webinar series like this. Um, and it also gives us an idea on what to focus on in the future. Um, and again, if you have, uh, you know, specific things that you're interested in doing, particularly um, if you're um, located on tribal lands or indigenous lands, um, please email us and let us know. We're, we're really um, excited to hear from you and work with you. So I'm going to give you an overview of Global Forest Watch. Global Forest Watch uh, is an interactive online forest monitoring and alert system designed to empower people everywhere with the information they need to better manage and conserve forest landscapes. It provides information about the status of forest landscapes, including tree cover gain and loss, land cover, land use, conservation, population density, and country specific data. And across the top, so when you go to the main Global Forest um, Watch website, you'll, you'll come to this and across the top, you can see sort of different options and different things you can do. Um, this website's actually changed quite a bit over the years. Um, and so um, every time they make a, a change, it's a great improvement to accessibility to the data and being able to visualize the data. So I'm gonna start first with the map. Um, actually, before I get to the map, um, I, I did want to mention that really the driving data behind Global Forest Watch um, is this um, database on tree cover loss um, developed by Matt Hansen et al. at the University of Maryland. Um, and it identifies area of tree cover loss from 2001 to 2019 globally using Landsat data. So that's at a 30 meter spatial resolution. Um, it does include location and amount of disturbance, but of course not the cause of the disturbance. Um, there's a lot of other stuff on Global Forest Watch um, besides the tree cover loss database. So I'll be mentioning some of that. Okay, so if you go to the map part of Global Forest Watch, this is what you'll see. Um, and again, it is global. Um, you can turn on and off different layers. So I'm gonna start with, um, on the left-hand side, you'll see this panel that says forest change, land cover, land use, climate, and biodiversity. So I'm gonna show you some of the data that's available in each of these little sections. 
So if you click on force change, um, these are the data um, that you can visualize in Global Force Watch and also download. Your, all of this is available for, for download. So there are um, deforestation alerts. Um, there's these um, alerts called GLAD alerts and then Terra I alerts. So the GLAD alerts are the higher spatial resolution deforestation alerts available right now only in the tropics. So if you were to click that on, you'll only see that in, um, in, the, in, the, in the countries that are within the tropics. You can also get fire alerts um, as well, and I'll, I'll show a picture of that in a minute. So that's coming from the VIRS data that um, we talked about in the last session. And then, um, you know, the, the real heavy lifter for Global Forest Watch is the tree cover change. Um, but you can, you can get tree cover gain. Um, tree cover loss, which is the one that most people are interested in, but also things like emerging hotspots um, and then tree cover loss by dominant driver. And if you click on the eye on any of these, um, you'll get more information about how these data sets were derived. And I just wanted to show you a quick um, image of the fire alerts from the VIR. So you can see on the left that it's highlighted here. Um, and then these are the fires that have occurred in California um, this year. Um, and so you can see we really have been inundated by, by wildfire. Um, with this one, this really big one kind of in, in the northern part of the state, um, the Mendocino complex being one of the largest fires ever in the state of California. Um, but the one south of there where it says Santa Rosa um, is still ongoing right now, actually. Um, and then the one down a little further south in San Jose um, is really close to where Amber and I work. So it's been a really, um, really interesting and challenging summer and fall for sure. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you um, is what's in the land cover tab. Um, so in land cover, you can get total tree cover. Um, so that's in um, percent tree cover. Then what's defined as primary forest, there's intact forest landscapes, mangrove forests, um, and then land cover, just a land cover map, and then tree plantations. So these all come from a variety of sources. And again, if you click on the I, you can get more information about where those data come from. For land use, there's all kinds of data available from logging concessions, mining concessions, and so forth. Um, protected areas as well, if you come down to conservation, there is some infrastructure um, and then uh, a lot of you may be interested in this indigenous and community lands um, database from, from Landmark that's actually developed by um, World Resources Institute. Um, and then a few other population density and, and things like that. Within climate, um, that's divided into three different sections. There's carbon emissions, um, carbon density and carbon gains as well. And so you can see the list of um, data that are available um, in this um, section. And lastly, for biodiversity, um, there's a lot of different databases available um, in biodiversity intactness, significance, um, key biodiversity areas from BirdLife International and so forth. So one of the really great things about Global Forest Watch is your ability to actually do some basic analysis with the data um, and, and it's done on the fly. So you can get this information without having to download the data. So um, for example, I zoomed in to the state of um, Washington and if you click on the analysis tab that's, that's on the top, what it says is click a layer on the map. And so I just clicked on um, the state of Washington right now. You can get, you can get finer res, I mean, um, smaller areas as well, but I'm just showing this as, um, as an example. And then when you do that, um, this little box comes up that says political boundaries for the state of Washington, and it gives you the total area. And then you click the analyze box 
And on the left hand side, there's a summary of the um, tree cover loss in the state of Washington over time. And so there's some there's some little statements at the top. And then um, as you come down, it's it's a very um, uh, high level sort of overview. So in order to get more detailed information, um, then you click at the very bottom on the dashboard. And when you do that, you'll get another box that comes up. And I'm not showing everything that they have here, but it will give you um, much more detailed information on um, tree cover loss and other things as well, tree cover gain and so forth. Um, in the state of Washington um, over time. And, and actually, this is just a snapshot of the page, um, but if, um, if I were on the web page, you can actually scroll down and there's all kinds of really interesting information about um, what's going on in the state of Washington. Um, also, I wanted to just um, let you know at the very top where it says United States and then Washington, you can actually se select subregions within Washington, so different counties and so forth. So if you're interested in a particular area within the state, um, then you can, you can get those analyses as well. Okay, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Amber, who will give you a quick live demo. Well, not really live because we're recording it, but a demo of Global Forest Watch. Over to you, Amber. All right, thanks, Cindy, for that great overview of Global Forest Watch. Um, as Cindy mentioned, this is such a fantastic tool, and um, we really love to highlight it through, throughout our trainings. Um, so with this exercise 11, your final exercise, we are going to um, just familiarize ourselves with the Global Forest Watch web tool um, and really look at tree cover loss and gain over some regions, um, in particular, some regions in the Pacific Northwest and um, areas along the border of Oregon and Washington. So when you first arrive to the Global Forest Watch website, as Cindy mentioned, um, this is what it looks like. There are a lot of helpful um, information um, and uh, tutorials and data here along um, the primary page. So you can take a look at that and do some investigation. We are going to be interested in the map function of Global Forest Watch, as Cindy was showing you through the, um, some of those examples. Now first, just to orient yourself, uh, we have the data panel along the left. Uh, we also have the legend and then an analysis tab. And when you first arrive um, at the, the map interface, you'll see that tree cover gain, tree cover loss, as well as um, total tree cover are included um, in the legend. <clears throat> so we can see tree cover gain and loss um, are data that uh, exist over time. So there will be a, a yearly la layer for each of um, the years, in particular 2001 to 2019. But then tree cover is a um, static map, and that's just tree cover from 2010 to give you an idea of um, density. You also have some options here um, for the map display. You can change the default base layer settings and look at satellite imagery, which we'll do later on in the exercise. So now the first thing we're going to do is we are going to turn off the tree cover gain layer. And you can do that just by clicking remove layer here. And we're gonna pan with our mouse. You can just easily pan and zoom. Um, and we'll just zoom into uh, the region so we can see most of Canada and the United States here. And one feature that I love about Global Forest Watch is the ability to um, animate and to look at these images over time really easily. So you can just come over here in the legend and click on play. And you can see tree cover loss using Landsat data over time from 2001 to 2019. So what you're seeing is a layer for every single year 
of regions where um, the algorithm has identified deforestation, tree cover loss, essentially. Um, not always deforestation. We'll take a look at that, what that means. Um, so you can just kind of get an idea of where we're seeing this change. And it looks like there's quite a lot of change happening um, in some really vital uh, regions uh, within the US and Canada, as well as in Mexico. Um, so uh, one thing that we will take a look at is my comment about tree cover loss is not always deforestation. Um, so this can occur for many reasons. And in particular, um, at least with this layer, um, the reason is not described. It's just identified as loss. There are other layers where we can get some more information about the type of loss. Um, and we'll talk about that later, but this could include deforestation, but it can also include things like these large fires that Cindy was showing you and logging and sustainable forestry operations. Um, so this is just really the loss or gain um, of the um, tree cover. So uh, the next thing we'll do is you can also, for any um, of these layers in your legend, you can get more information about the data set itself just by clicking on the layer info icon here, which is really nice. Um, and it tells you essentially uh, the resolution. So 30 by 30 meters, the standard Landsat resolution, um, the source. So you can actually read a paper on how um, these data are calculated, and then you get information about frequency and, and cautions and limitations to the data, as well as just a general overview. So this is really nice to spend some time um, reviewing and thinking about, um, especially if you're going to be using these data and this information for any kind of analysis or decision making along the way. It's really good to, to know what's going on behind the scenes here as well. So now we'll just turn this off here. And um, we are going to, again, uh, come over here and click on the analysis tab. So we ha have a legend and analysis. And this is also a great function where you can essentially click on a layer in the map and do some uh, really quick and fast analysis of the amount of tree cover loss or gain for particular political boundaries, administrative boundaries. Um, you also can draw your own shape or upload a shape. And we'll not talk about this in the exercise, um, but that is another option for you as well. Um, and I believe you can um, upload a shape as something like a KML file. You can also choose things like terrestrial eco regions and river basins. Um, but we're just going to stick with the political boundaries for now. Now, if you just hover over the United States, we can maybe zoom in one more time. And we can just click on the map. Now you can see the political boundary is identified as the United States, the total area. And you can just click on Analyze. And you'll, it, this will process. All of this will be done in the cloud. And then you'll get the information about um, whatever boundary you selected um, along the panel here. So there's a lot of info here. Um, it identifies things like um, how much natural forest is located in the United States, and then gives metrics on things like loss and um, a primary forest loss as well as just general tree cover loss. So we can see here that from 2001 to 2019, um, by the metrics of this algorithm and the way that the calculations are done, um, the United States lost um, over 40 million hectares of tree cover, which is a decrease in 14% of tree cover um, since 2000. And um, that relates to over 11 gigatons of CO2 emissions. Um, so some, some kind of scary uh, numbers here, but really interesting to see. And then we also can get information about things like 
the um, type of tree cover. So there's natural forests, plantations, and then non-forested regions. Um, so a lot of information here. You can then also zoom in to uh, US states um, to also calculate these metrics as well. Um, so that's just one example. If we click back on the legend, we'll no longer see the statistics. We can then choose a lot of these different data sets. So the next we're going to do is look at land cover. And then we're going to choose land cover. Turn that layer on. And with any of these layers, you can always get information about this layer and what it means. Um, this was a land cover map um, created uh, through the ESIS Climate Change Initiative. And the, the um, date for this is a static date. It's a land cover map from 2015. Um, and hey, there was an accuracy assessment calculated on this, just like you guys learned as well. Um, so what you can see here now is in the, the legend, the um, land cover map identifies these different categories, very similar in a lot of ways to um, the, the um, supervised classification that you all did. So we can take a look and see where we um, have agriculture, um, much of the um, Midwestern and the Great Plains um, within California's Central Valley, for example, and where we see forests um, and shrubland in the Southwest, uh, a variety of things here. We can turn, go ahead and turn off our land cover 2015. Um, it does kind of dominate the map when we look at it there. And we can also look at something um, within the climate option. So if we click on climate, we can look at tree biomass density. So we can just turn that on. And now we can see, um, again, you can always refer to the legend. We can always refer to the layer information. But this essentially identifies um, regions of very high biomass, um, forested regions. So what we notice immediately here when we're looking at um, the Western US is that with the Sierra and the Cascades, we see really high um, biomass density indicated with these green colors here. Um, and you can, again, always get information about that as well. We can also look at things like biodiversity hotspots. So again, um, choosing one of these uh, options here, biodiversity, and then we can turn on biodiversity hotspots. And what we will notice um, in the Western US and in California in particular, um, the biodiversity hotspots have popped up as uh, pink. And a lot of those biodiversity hotspots coincide with um, heavy biomass, um, heavy tree biomass. Okay. So now um, that we've looked at, we've explored some of the features and some of the data layers, there are many more that we won't get to in this exercise, but that's a starting point. We are going to um, look at forest change um, in the Oregon-Washington border and also um, use the indigenous lands layer to take a look at um, the Warm Springs Reservation um, up in Oregon. So we're gonna, um, you can either just totally reset your map, or you could just turn off all the layers. And we're just gonna kind of get started with a blank slate to do part three of the exercise. So um, we can zoom back out, take a look at the entire US as starting point. We can then turn go to this um, land use layer, which we haven't really explored much of yet. Um, and a lot of the data here are related to um, socioeconomic uh, activities. So a lot of these are things like um, oil palm concessions, um, mining concessions, and these are not available globally. These are very specific to certain countries. So you can take a look at, if you're in, interested in those things, um, where the data are located there. Um, one other example that we give oftentimes with 
Global Forest Watch is the explosion of palm oil plantations in Southeast Asia. And you can look at uh, forest change over time and then compare that to the regions where these palm oil plantations are located. And it's really striking. Um, we won't do that here, but, but that's um, some of the data. Those are some of the data you can look at. Another layer that we will explore is this indigenous and community lands layer. So we can turn that on. And once we have turned that layer on, again, you can see the legend here where um, it looks like for the US, the indigenous lands that are identified are the government acknowledged lands. We can take a look at the info here and how these data are acquired. Um, you can see that the, um, the source is this um, link called Landmark, the providers at Landmark. So if you want the complete list of the data providers and, and how um, the data are displayed and um, integrated into Global Forest Watch, you can get a little more information here. Um, this Landmark is a, um, data set that's a consolidation of, of efforts from a lot of different groups. Um, and so you can get more information about what Landmark is here as well. But for our purposes of the exercise today, we can see um, the federally recognized uh, tribal lands of the United States. Um, and what we are gonna do is take a look at um, this region up here in Oregon and Washington. We are also going to come back to land cover and turn on our tree cover layer. We are also going to turn on our uh, uh, tree cover gain. So we'll go to forest change and then click on tree cover gain. and tree cover loss. So sort of um, some of those initial settings that you see when you generally go to um, the Global Forest Watch map initially. Now, we will. what we will do is zoom in to this region here um, where the um, Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs are located, just south of Mount Hood National Forest. And we can zoom into this region and we can really see the um, outline of the um, reservation boundaries, as well as these layers that we've turned on of tree cover, tree cover loss gain um, in this region. Now, this is a step that I think they might be doing some updates currently with um, this indigenous lands layer. So um, if the if the next couple of steps where we're analyzing the data from the Warm Springs Reservation does not work for you, you can um, reload the map and try again. Um, and you can also do the calculation over the entire state of Oregon. Um, so this is something I've noticed in the past about month or so with Global Forest Watch where there tends to be some um, analysis issue with this layer. Um, so I'm not sure why that's happening, but just as a heads up, if you, if you um, receive an error here or you're not able to do this calculation, um, no worries. Um, you could also, if you really did want to explore this region, you could um, import your own layer or you could create a polygon around this region and, and do the calculation that way as well. But we're going to try it. We'll see what happens. Um, so if you hover your mouse over the Warm Springs Reservation, um, after you've zoomed in a little more closely, you should be able then to click on this region and get information about it. So um, we see that we've selected the Warm Springs Reservation. And then um, we can continue to zoom. If you use this zoom option, it'll take you into a little bit closer. And then once you get close enough, maybe that was a little too far, uh, you'll see the zoom changes to analyze. So for these regions, you do have to be zoomed in quite far to, to run the analysis. And we'll try this out and click on analyze. 
Okay, so if you are having trouble with the analyze option for the Warm Springs Reservation, that's okay. Um, we will just move on to the next few steps of the lab. Um, you may need to reset where we are um, in terms of adding the forest loss, the forest change, and the forest cover. Um, but what we can go ahead and do is um, finish out the steps of the exercise um, because we don't necessarily need that analysis um, information to take a look at some of the other features of Global Forest Watch. So what we will do is just turn off this here. Um, we will come back to our legend. And we can also change the opacity of these layers. So let's just go ahead and um, change the tree cover loss. Um, opacity to 25% by clicking on that little icon there and you're just moving this over. We can also do the same thing for the other layers. So we will do the same thing for our indigenous lands layer. Somewhere around 25%. And we will go ahead and also turn off our tree cover gain layers as well as our tree cover layers. So we're just gonna be interested in identifying the tree cover loss within this region and comparing it with satellite data. So actually let's move this to 50%, somewhere around there. So we can see this a little more clearly. So now we can see this patchy tree cover loss in many of these regions along the western edge of the Warm Springs Reservation. What we can also do is take a look at satellite data, recent satellite imagery, and then compare the satellite imagery with the overlay of the tree cover loss to see if the um, information about loss corresponds visually to what we um, would indicate as loss. So if you come here to recent satellite imagery, depending on the day that you're actually going through the exercise, this might be a little different, but you can see here, um, there are many different um, satellite scenes here. And just scroll down to one that um, looks cloud free. Um, I'm going to select the September 9th, um, 2020. Um, it does look like there might have been a small fire here, as you can see um, a little bit of either cloud or smoke plume. Um, but this one is, is good enough for um, what we're going to do here. And then we can just zoom in to some of this patchy loss and really start to compare the features that we see in the satellite image. So this is a Sentinel-2 satellite image, which in a lot of ways is similar to Landsat, is it has, has a little higher spatial resolution as well as temporal resolution. Um, but we can really take a peek at how the pink areas of tree cover loss correspond to um, the satellite image. And again, we can just modify the opacity here um, by kind of almost turning the layer off and then turning it on to see if these pink area areas correspond to what we see as bare ground. In a lot of our region here along the, the western edge of the reservation, it seems to be true. Um, it seems to look right visually where we identify the loss in pink and um, by just looking at the satellite image, um, it does look like there are some patchy regions of forest loss here. Um, it does look like many of these regions might be um, regrowing. However, uh, in particular, I'm looking right here where there is um, tree cover loss identified, and it looks like maybe it's growing back a bit. Um, so depending on the year that the tree cover loss occurred. So if we just turn this back on to somewhere around 50%, um, we can even zoom out a little bit, and again, we can play this animation and look at how tree cover loss has changed from 2001 to 2019. So we can see as the years progress, these patchy regions um, where the tree cover loss has occurred. 
So you could also identify like that example I just showed, maybe tree cover loss occurred in 2001 or earlier on in the record. And now since then, the um, forest cover is starting to return. The vegetation is growing back in this region. The final thing that we will look at through um, Global Forest Watch here is another interesting feature that helps us to identify the type of change that we're seeing. So we can come over here to um, forest change and we can look at the uh, tree cover loss by dominant driver. And we can turn that layer on. What you'll notice immediately is that this layer um, is quite a bit different in terms of the spatial resolution than um, the other layers that we're looking at. So if we come in and just look at the identify, we'll see that the resolution here is 10 by 10 kilometers. So um, much coarser resolution than say our Landsat image on 30 meter grid. Um, again, you can figure, you can learn a little bit more about how these data are um, calculated and collected in the overview section. But if we just zoom out a little bit more within this region, we can start to see the um, tree cover loss by dominant driver. And we have these different designations, things like forestry, wildfire. Um, and we can see that much of the loss, this patchy loss that we're seeing up here um, is corresponds with the forestry designation, um, which makes sense if we imagine the way the landscape changes. Um, we think about that. Um, generally, a, a lot of forest um, forestry activities are going to be um, conducted in this sort of patchy, um, spatially uh, explicit sort of view. Um, with these small little patches. Um, something else that we might notice is that there's this wildfire designation, this sort of burnt orange color. And if we come in a little bit further east, we can see this large region here um, that corresponds to a wildfire um, dominant loss. Um, and then we can also, uh, compare that to these sort of patchy regions. Um, it's, a, it's a more um, spatially um, explicit region, a larger region, um, continuous of, of forest loss. So we would identify this more as a wildfire than say forestry activity. And um, as we've done with the other uh, examples, if we zoom in here and we play this forest loss, what we will likely see is this, oh, Forest loss happened quickly, um, all within one year. It looks like it occurred earlier on in the record. If I just play this again, pops up there right around 2005. Um, so any of you who are maybe from this region may be familiar with the fire that this is um, that occurred in 2005, but it was quite a large fire um, in comparison to what we're seeing here with the forestry um, and the patchwork. So that really gives you an idea of how we can investigate forest change, forest loss, forest gain um, for large regions, start to analyze some of these features in the map, um, and, and then also get a little bit more information about the dominant driver of that change. Um, so we do have some limitations with the coarseness of the spatial resolution with the dominant driver layer, but I think it provides some really nice um, insights into how the uh, tree cover is changing um, and what the drivers might be for these different regions. Um, so that concludes the exercise on monitoring forest change with Global Forest Watch. And again, there are many other features that you can explore here. Um, you can also uh, sign up for those forest alerts for your region of interest. You can um, include your own um, data on the shape that you want to analyze. So you can upload shapes 
um, look at very specific regions of interest. Um, and with some of the additional features that you may want to explore, this might require setting up a, a free My Global Forest Watch account. So just a heads up there, if there are some really advanced features that you want to use, you might need to set up an account. Um, so that concludes the exercise for today. Uh, we will now um, take any questions and, as Cindy mentioned, discuss that survey and um, make sure you all have that link so you can provide us some information about um, how you like the training, what you'd like to see improved, um, and all of those types of things. So um, we will now move on to the question and answer portion. Thank you. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the overview of Global Forest Watch. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a pretty short session compared to some of the others that we've had. Um, but do feel free to continue to add questions into the Q&A box. Um, we only had one so far, um, so I can address that here. And hopefully, you can see the question and answer um, document. That's actually a very good question. Um, so the, the question is, in the tree cover layer, is the major tree species noted? Some forest management is based on the predominant tree species. And that's a great question. Um, but the answer, unfortunately, is no. Um, so the Global Forest Watch uses Landsat data, which, as we covered in many of our sessions, has a spatial resolution of 30 meters. And is spectrally, um, the, the wavelengths of the Landsat bands are not uh, small enough spectrally to identify uh, differences in tree species. Um, so we really can only identify um, trees in general or heavy vegetation in general um, in order to discern between different um, species we would need something like a hyperspectral sensor that has many, many bands within short wavelength ranges in order to determine differences in the vegetation types. Um, and that's not something that, that is done on a global basis. Um, so unfortunately, the tree cover is just identified. And I also wanted to mention that you can also get uh, and I think we, we talked about it, but you can get more information about the data itself and the algorithm that is run and the processes that are used um, by clicking on the, the information icon for each of those layers, um, because there's a lot of work that goes in, into that. Oh, there's a question here about, um, here I'll post it in the Q&A document so you can see it. Um, uh, I mentioned you can upload a shape file and the question is, can we download a raster of a tree cover loss, for instance, associated with the uploaded shape file? I'm not sure <laughs> uh, is the short answer to that. I know that you can upload a shapefile and run the analysis like we did in the example to get those metrics and um, obtain that information. But I am not sure if you can actually download the raster image as like a KML or a GeoTIFF within Global Forest Watch. So that might be um, a question better suited for the Global Forest Watch folks or um, doing some, some digging on the tool. I, I'm not sure about that offhand, unfortunately. Well, those are all the questions for now. Feel free to add some more questions. I will uh, go ahead and add that survey in one last for the link here. Um, we really do appreciate if you all take that. Um, I also wanted to mention, I put this into the chat earlier, uh, but we will be working um, 
on another training with the Indigenous Mapping Workshop in a couple of weeks, and I can um, pull up the, um, the information here. Hopefully you can see this on my screen. Uh, if you're interested in other Indigenous focused uh, geospatial tools and mapping, um, do check this uh, workshop out. It's, it's virtual. Um, there are a lot of different sessions from um, not just us with NASA, but there are folks with Google, Esri Canada, um, QGIS, Mapbox, and other partners who will be doing separate trainings over this three-day event. Um, and it, it really uh, looks to be an exciting event. Uh, please take, take a look at that. Um, if You're interested in that as well. And I can include the link again for that um, in the chat. And also do remember if you're interested in the um, certificate of completion or the uh, continuing education units, do please complete all your homework by November 30th. And then we will be um, sort of marking who's completed the homework after that point and um, working towards getting those completion certificates as well as CEUs out. It might take a couple of months, so do please be patient as we work to get all of those forms out to all of the attendees here as well. Uh, there, uh, let's see, um, there are a couple other questions. I'll put those here in the in the Q&A. Is it possible to download the time series animation for tree cover loss as shown? Uh, also, I'm not entirely sure of that, if you can download it as a GIF, but what I've done in the past for presentations is I've just played the animation and recorded my screen and then um, created my own little GIF that way. So uh, that might be one way around it, uh, but I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I've never, I've never actually downloaded an animation, but you can definitely record your screen as the animation is, is playing and use that in presentations or anything else. I've, I've definitely done that um, in the past. And there's another question about the homework, and I mentioned this at the beginning, um, but when you submit your homework, uh, you, you will receive, uh, there'll be a question window that appears like on the web browser. Um, so do please make note of the homeworks that you submitted um, because it does take a bit of time uh, to uh, go in and check every homework for each individual participant. And we'll be doing those all at the end. Um, so you'll have a confirmation screen that pops up that says, this, um, thank you for your submission or something like that in the Google form. So that'll be your marker for um, if you have, uh, if you've submitted your homework. Um, and then I guess related to the question about recording series <laughs> animation, uh, I, on um, my Mac, and I'm not sure how to do this on a PC, but on my Mac, you can record your screen with QuickTime. Um, and maybe you could do this on a PC too. I have not tried it. Uh, but you can pull up QuickTime and then um, there's some kind of function or feature for uh, recording your screen. And then a little note pops up and then you, you, and then from there on, it just records all the movements of your screen that happen. And then you can go in and edit that later. Um, so I use QuickTime for that. Um, oh, this is another great question that's just popping up I'm seeing. Uh, for those of you who shared your information, um, let me try to paste this in the, I was trying to paste this in the Q&A, but it doesn't seem to be working for me. Uh, for those of you who shared your contact information, um, we, I don't believe we can compile and share that information. I think it's a legal thing. Um, so do please make note um, of those folks who shared their information um, as it was sent out to you all. 
Um, I, I would need to double check on, I'm not sure if we legally can send that information out, um, but that's something that I'll check on. Oh, great. And then there's a, another person who uh, shared a link to how to uh, share, record your screen, and I'll include that here in the Q&A document as well. And again, with all the other Q&A, um, we will be posting the document on the course website after this training. There is another question about how to download the associated analysis on Global Forest Watch. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly how to do that, but there might be an option when you run the analysis, something you could double check really quickly. We can even pull it up and take a look with us. I'm just not sure exactly how you would do that. Oops. Oh, jeez. Looks like Global Forest Watch is uh, making some modifications to their tool, um, and they have some additional tools available as well. Let's try this out and see what the options are. And I'll keep monitoring the questions here if any others come in. Ah, that's something I, I did not mention. Um, for a lot of the uh, additional analyses, more advanced analyses, you do need to create account, an account with Global Force Watch. So that's likely where you can actually save that information, potentially download it. Um, so that, that might be the answer to your question. Um, I do not have a Global Force Watch account, so I've not actually done that myself. Um, but, but yeah. Potentially, you might need to sign up in order to save those data. That's a, that's a great point. I, I never tried to do that before. <laughs> Let's see if any other questions came in. It doesn't look like any other questions came in. So um, I just want to thank you all for being with us over these past four weeks. It's been a really great experience and our first online um, Indigenous training that we've done. We've always done these in person. So hopefully someday we uh, will be able to, to get back together in person and, and have these dialogues. Um, but I do hope you enjoyed the series. Um, all of the data and recordings and information will, will continue to stay on the course website. Um, so you can access those, you can view the recordings on YouTube um, in the future if you want to go back and take a look at any of this. Um, 
and do please complete the survey. One last final plug for that. And um, I do hope you all all take care. And uh, you can email us with any other additional questions that you may have. Um, oh, and it looks like Cindy posted some more information on downloading data from Global Forest Watch. So that should be helpful to you as well for um, those of you who may have that question. So, um, all right, everyone. Well, thanks again for being with us. It was a real pleasure and uh, do take care.